This is the third and last of our videos on property attributes. If you aren't very familiar with property attributes, property drawers or types already, you should watch the two previous videos before this one. So far we've explored how to make our own property attributes and how to use property drawers to completely customize their behavior and appearance in the inspector. Now it's time to dig a little deeper and learn about how they behave on arrays, which is a tad trickier. For our example, we'll make an attribute that forces an array to have the same size as a specific enum and to be displayed with the enum's names in the inspector. Here is the Unity project exactly as we left it off in the last video. I'll begin by explaining the context of the example. So, I really like enums. Like, really. A common use case for them is to have them as named indices for an array of data. Let me show you what I mean in our example script. Instead of this, say we have a method called write, which writes some text in the game. Then we have an array of integers that represent different text sizes. I'll give it some values starting at a default and then ascending from tiny to huge. 12, 6, 8, 14, 18. Now we'll have the write method take an index for which size to write in. I won't actually implement the writing functionality, but just use debug.log to print out which size we've chosen to use. Now let's say we want to call write from somewhere. If this was a real case, it would probably be from another script, but I'll just do it from the start method. I want the size that's a bit bigger than the default, so now I have to go count. 0, 1, 2, 3. The annoying thing is that every time I need to call write, or just want to read my code and want to know what's going on, I have to go look at text sizes to see what each index points to. And if I ever want to add more sizes, I'll have to either add them to the end of the array, or I have to go adjust every single place in the code where an index is used. This is a good time to write an enum that will keep track of what each index means. So I'll make a public enum called textile, and then I'll write the name of each size. Medium, tiny, small, big, huge. So now each name maps to a size in our array. With that in place, I'll modify write to take a textile instead of an integer. Then we of course also need to change this to use the integer value of the style. From now on, when we call write, we can just see the names of all sizes and choose the one we want, which in this case is big. Let's go look at this in the inspector. We can of course see the array of text sizes and we can modify its length and values, but we don't know what each item means. We just see the indices instead of the names we gave them, so we're again at the point where we need to revisit the script to check what each index means every time we want to modify something. Another problem is that if we change the length of the array to be shorter, we might get errors when running the game as the code might request sizes that no longer exist. These are the two issues we'll solve with our attribute. We'll make the names display in the inspector and we'll force the length to be equal to the amount of names in the enum. So if we want to change which options are available, we'll change the enum and then the inspector automatically falls in line rather than us having to do both. Let's get started. I'll make an attribute called enum data attribute and a drawer for it. As usual, we'll begin by writing the attribute. Let's begin by writing using system because we'll need a type parameter for the constructor. Then we inherit from property attribute. Then I want an array of strings holding the names of all items, which will be defined in the constructor. So public read only string names. Then a constructor, which will take type enum type. Here we can set our names array to be equal to the names of the enum, which we do by writing names equals enum.getNames and then pass in our enum type. That was all we need for the attribute, so let's head over to example and assign our attribute to text sizes. We pass in type of textile because that's the enum we want to restrict ourselves to. Let's make the drawer now. Again, we'll just begin with the basics. Using Unity Editor, Custom Property Drawer, Type of Enum Data Attribute, Inherit from Property Drawer, Override on GUI and then get a reference to our attribute, which I'll call Enum Data. When you use a property attribute on an array, the drawer you make is actually not for the array, but for each element in the array. In a way, that's pretty nice, because then we don't need to know how to draw a full array by ourselves, but it also gets tricky, because we'll have less control of the array itself. But that means that here we just need to write how we want to display any one item. 
since we actually just want to change the label, we have the good fortune of being able to use editor GUI at property field, which I showed you in the beginning of the first video. We'll pass in position, property, label, and true. The last argument means that if whatever we're drawing has children of its own, we'll also draw them. Now our job is to change the label to display the name of the current index in the enum. We do that by writing label.txt equals enumdata.names and then passing in the appropriate index. But we don't know what that is yet and it's actually quite tricky to figure out as we aren't given that information directly. For now, I'll make a separate variable for it and just give it a value of zero so we can see if things are working out so far in Unity. It indeed appears so, as each item in the array now has the name of the first element in the enum, so that's awesome. So, how do we know which index we're currently drawing? If you hold down shift and right click a field in the inspector, you can choose to print property path, which is the name of the specific serialized property. Doing so for the first item in the array gives us text sizes .array .data 0 and for the second element it's the exact same but of course with index 1. Luckily for us we do have access to the property path inside the drawer so we can use that to figure out which index we're currently drawing. What we need to do is to use some string manipulation to first cut out everything up to the point of the number. Then we remove the last square bracket, which will leave us with just the number, which we can then convert to an integer and use as our index. We access the property path by writing property.propertyPath. I'll save this in a variable called path for convenience. So now we can set index to be equal to path.substring, which will return a segment of the string. We need to give it a starting index in the string, which should be where the number begins. We can get this by calling path.index off and passing in the first square bracket and then adding one to that so we get the index of the number rather than the bracket. So now we'll get a substring which starts at the number and goes all the way to the end. Then we can use replace to replace the final square bracket with nothing. At this point we have a string of the number, so let's convert it by passing it to system.convert.toInt32. To summarize, we take the path and find the index in where the square bracket is, and then we add 1 to get the starting index of the number. And then we make a new string that starts at that point. After that we take the remaining square bracket and cut it out. Finally we convert the string to an integer and assign it to the index variable. And now we can assign the proper name! In Unity, we can now see the beautiful result of our work as the inspector properly shows the enum names. The size is still wrong though, and if we give it a higher value than the enum size, we'll get an out of range error. To fix the size issue, we want to modify the size of the array from the drawer. Again, we don't have a direct reference to the array itself, but we can use the serialized object to search for its property path. Let's shift right click and print it to see what it is. It's simply text sizes. If you remember from earlier, the property path of each of our elements is text sizes.array.data and then an index. This means that we can use the property path of our element to figure out the property path of the array itself, as whatever comes before the first dot is the same. In our script, once we have found the array, we want to be able to interact with it. This is exactly what serialized properties are for, so we'll make a serialized property variable to service our connection. We find the array by writing property.serializedObject.findProperty. If you remember, serializedObject is the reference to the entire object, so we're looking at the object of the property and then finding another property on it. Here we pass in the property path of the array. We generate it by making a substring of our current property path. It will begin at zero and continue to the point of the last dot. The reason it's the last dot and not the first dot is that I actually want it to be textsizes.array and not just textsizes, even though that was the name that we were given. Before doing anything else, let's check if the result is null, meaning we didn't find anything. If this is the case, it means that we aren't actually using the attribute on an array, so we'll display an error label stating that this attribute is meant to be used on an array, and then we'll just return. Now that we have the array, we can access its size by writing array.arraySize and comparing it to the amount of names in our attribute. If the two don't match, we just change the array size. Let's go into Unity and see what happens when we play with it. If we give it a bigger size, it will instantly be scaled back down without errors. We can also try adding a new value to our enum in example. Once we open the object, it automatically expands the array to fit the new entry. Awesome. 
There are, however, multiple unfortunate problems. If we don't look at the array in the inspector after changing the enum, it won't update the size because the drawer is never called. Another problem is that if we give the array a smaller size, it will actually apply that size before our drawer expands it again. This means that we will lose the values we had because Unity just will duplicate the highest value when increasing the size of the array. This can easily be redone with control set though. The last problem is that if we give it a size of zero, it won't scale back up again. The problem comes from the way the property drawer works. It is activated once for each element. If there are none, it will never run and as such it can't change the array size. I'll actually leave these problems be for this video. In a future video, when I look into other use cases for property drawers, I will probably redo this example without using an attribute. But besides that, I'd like to make an optimization to the drawer. Every time on GUI is run, I'm going to print out a message. If you pay attention to the amount of messages in the console, you'll see that it prints a lot of them when I move my cursor around. The inspector gets drawn quite frequently, and every time it's drawn, a drawer runs once for each item. What you'll also notice is that every time this happens, we make a search for the array. That is not exactly optimal. The inherent problem comes from the fact that the drawer works on the level of each element and not the array itself, meaning we're trying to fix the length every time an element is drawn, instead of just once for the entire array. But we can at least reduce the performance cost of it by instead saving the result of the search in a variable that exists outside of ongui. Let's then only search if we haven't already found it. To see the effect of this change, let's print a message every time we search for the array. As you see, the script remembers the result for as long as the inspector of the array is open, and even then it only makes the search once. There are other optimizations that could be made to the script, but I'll leave it be as it isn't exactly relevant to the topic. There is however one final issue with our drawer that I want to show and fix. Let's head into the example script. It could easily be the case that we want to have a class or a struct that could contain more data about each style instead of just an integer. So let me make one like that. First I'll apply the system.serializable attribute. Public class text data. I'll just have a public int size and a public color color. I'll also remove the default values of the array and rename it to text data and then change the type of the array to text data. Finally I'll just update write to get rid of the error. Now in Unity, once we've given it a size, we'll see some odd behavior when we open any of the items. It is simply drawn on top of everything else. Nothing moves to make space for it. Back into the drawer we go to make a solution. We've before solved the problem of the inspector not giving us enough space, but this time it's different as we're using editor GUI.property field to draw with. Therefore, we don't know how much space we'll need. And as we just saw, the space needed actually changes depending on if each item is expanded or not. But using editor GUI.property field is actually not a problem, but a big help. Let's go over right get property height. Here we can simply ask editor GUI how much space it needs to draw the property field and then we can return that exact height which will give us the space we need. So return editor GUI dot get property height and pass in property. This will update even as we expand and collapse the item. And as we'd expect it works wonderfully. That was everything we had to say about property attributes at least for now. There's more to explore in property drawers though, and that's what we'll do next. Specifically, we'll modify how serializable classes are drawn in the inspector, which also is very useful. Please come by our Discord or comment here if you think you have a good suggestion about what we should cover in future videos. Otherwise, just have an amazing day.